Hello and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Gabriel Prada and here is a quick lecture about long ultrasound for acute alveolar interstitial syndrome, which includes the concept of pulmonary edema. The acute alveolar interstitial syndrome includes conditions with bilateral diffuse peripheral involvement of the interstitium and the alveolocapillary membrane that leads to hypoxemia and different degrees of respiratory failure. Such conditions include cardiogenic pulmonary edema, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and interstitial pneumonias with atypical and viral etiologies, including influenza and COVID-19. What these three disease states have in common is the increasing lung density due to increasing fluid content in the interstitium and alveoli. That is why they're seen in chest x-ray as bilateral peripheral diffuse infiltrates, whether interstitial or alveolar or both. In long ultrasound, this is seen as bilateral BE pattern. That is, many B lines across both lungs. However, what's most interesting is that with long ultrasound, we can go further and evaluate the pleural line and the peripheral lung parenchyma, something that chest X-ray cannot do very well. With long ultrasound, we can group these three disease states in two subgroups, one for cardiogenic pulmonary edema and another for ARDS and interstitial pneumonia. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which is a non-inflammatory illness, will be seen as bilateral homogeneous B pattern that is, bilateral B lines seen in almost all intercostal spaces, an intact pleural line, and no subpleural consolidations. ARDS and interstitial pneumonia, however, are both inflammatory processes, which explains why they're seen as bilateral heterogeneous B pattern, with irregular pleural line and subpleural consolidations, meaning that some areas of the lung will have a lot of B lines with irregular pleural line and subpleural consolidations, while other areas will be completely spared, close to normal. So what are the tips for optimal image acquisition in alveolar interstitial syndrome? Patient positioning is whatever is most comfortable for the patient so long as we can do a proper exam. For probe selection, we will use the linear high-frequency probe to evaluate the pleural line and subpleural consolidation, and the phased array low-frequency probe to look for B lines and their distribution. For protocol selection, it is important that you scan over all zones, especially dependent areas. Try to scan the entire back of the patient, if possible. For picture optimization, you may need to increase your gain. Confirm B pattern in several intercostal spaces and in both lungs, and their distribution, whether homogeneous or heterogeneous. Before moving on, let's clarify and reinforce what we're looking for in acute alveolar interstitial syndrome. We will evaluate the pleural line, the subpleural area, and the presence of B pattern. The pleural line will look intact in cardiogenic pulmonary edema, while it will look irregular in ARDS and interstitial pneumonia. The subpleural area will be intact in cardiogenic pulmonary edema. In ARDS and interstitial pneumonia, there will be subpleural consolidations. And the B pattern will be homogeneous in cardiogenic pulmonary edema, but heterogeneous in ARDS and interstitial pneumonia. Remember that in ARDS and interstitial pneumonia, there will be areas of normal lung with much less or even absent B pattern and nice pleural line without subpleural consolidations. Let's start with the pleural line. Here we see 2D images with a linear probe. On the left, we can see a nice, intact pleural line, while on the right, the pleural line looks irregular, ugly. It is not a nice, horizontal line anymore. Another example of irregular pleural line is shown here. This one looks sort of ragged, ugly, not very linear. And the last one is even worse, where the pleural line is completely lost. It's all choppy and irregular. Now let's evaluate the subpleural area. When it is normal, we should see either A lines or B lines, nothing else. On the left, we see B lines, nothing else. This is classic of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. But on the right, it is clearly abnormal. We see a consolidation. In long ultrasound, consolidation are ugly images that look like solid tissue, with areas that are very bright and others not so bright or even dark 
and with irregular choppy margins. Consolidations move with respiration, and this makes sense because what we're seeing is actually long tissue. Also, consolidations can generate vertical artifacts that resemble beelines arising from the far field margin. The image on the right then fits the classic description of a consolidation, and because it's peripheral, right where the plural line should be, we call it subplural consolidation. Let's see another subplural consolidation. This one is not as big, but it's still very characteristic of a subplural consolidation. It is right below where the plural line should be. Now let's finish with the coolest image of our ultrasonic world, B-lines, our nightclub laser light lines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, B-lines make me want to party. B-lines are bright vertical artifacts that represent moderate increase in lung density, something like pulmonary edema or diffuse inflammation of the interstitium and alveoli, but not quite as much as with pneumonic consolidations or major atelectasis, where the lung density is severely increased and is therefore directly visualized as lung tissue. B-lines are artifacts, like A-lines. Artifacts, remember, are defective interpretations of the ultrasound machine. If I were John Legend, I could say that B-lines are perfect imperfections of ultrasound machines, but I'm not. B-lines, in order to be legit, must meet the following criteria. They must arise from the plural line, and only from the plural line. They must travel all the way down to the end of the screen. They must move vigorously with respiration, and they must erase A-lines. If you have B-lines, you shouldn't see A-lines. Both of these images shown here meet all these characteristics. They're classic B lines. As I explained in the lecture of normal long ultrasound exam, B lines may represent just the minor or major fissures of the lung, or it may be that you're scanning close over the heart and the great vessels. What is pathologic is B pattern. B pattern is the presence of three or more B lines per intercostal space in at least two adjacent intercostal spaces. The more B-lines you see, the more severe the alveolar interstitial syndrome. And if you have too many B-lines together, they will coalesce and the lung will look just white with a big, thick, mega B-line. Both cardiogenic pulmonary edema and ARDS and interstitial pneumonia will have bilateral B pattern, which will be more pronounced over dependent areas. The difference is that ARDS and interstitial pneumonia will show a heterogeneous distribution of this B pattern. Some areas will be heavily loaded with B lines, while other areas will have few or even no B lines. You might encounter some literature trying to differentiate characteristics of B lines in cardiogenic versus non-cardiogenic etiologies. However, there is as of now no solid data supporting those claims. Thank you for watching. Make sure you check out our website and YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and share.